And that'll bring us to number one on our list of Stephen King's scariest moments. And uh, this one we had kind of a tough time deciding on. You took this way too seriously, man. Like, you wouldn't even let me leave the room until we decided on a moment. Ah, it was just a few days. Relax. Days? Months? You kept me in that room for months! Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. We've got something a little different for you guys with this episode, but before we get started, what are we drinking? The last bottle of Chucky's Check Pills That Kills. Better cherish it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to bring to you a Stephen King Top 10 Scariest Moments list. And we're going to diverge from the standard Pennywise coming out of the sewer. All of the obvious scary jump scare moments, yeah, yeah. we're going to stay away from. We're going to delve into a little more of the psychological side of things. Ones you may have missed, but when you hear it, will be like, oh yeah, yeah, that was very important into building suspense. And we're going to work backwards here. So number 10 on our list is Dick Halloran in The Shining driving back to the Overlook Hotel after he's been summoned by Danny. Just the atmosphere of him driving through the snowstorm, only being able to see about two feet in front of him with those shitty headlights, and just the fact he's driving into this complete darkness. Yeah. Also, knowing that he is going to this unknown situation at the hotel, that's probably gonna lead him to his death. Unreliable assholes. Yeah. <laughs> And that scene I just found very unnerving, yeah, you know, yeah. like, well, number one, driving in a snowstorm in the dark is scary, but just, the, it's like, it's so bleak. He's driving into the complete abyss. The stuff that he sees, too, right, in this major storm, like this tractor trailer is completely tipped over yeah. with, like, all the cops, and they got the flares and everything, yeah. like... It's just, it's so ominous and yeah. creepy, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and when he makes it past that, it's like... You've now passed the people who have... That's as far as they've gone. Yeah, yeah. Now you are going further. You're going, yeah. Done those types of drives, <laughs> man. Driving into Fargo that one time, white-knuckling it through a storm, <laughs> seeing semis jackknifed. It's uh, scary. It's fucking scary. Number nine on our list, and this scene is from The Stand. Franny and her dad are in her dad's bedroom, and her dad is in bed, and he's already <laughs> sick. <laughs> <laughs> They're both listening to the radio, and Kathy Bates is on the other end, and she's doing a broadcast talking about uh, the corruption of the government and how everybody's rights are getting eroded. The military barges in, and you hear gunshots. <laughs> and Franny and her dad hear what's going on on the radio, and basically, it's a breakdown of society at this point on top of the sickness that's going around. Right. Yeah. And they're both in horror listening to that. Yeah. And they're like, what's going on? And he's sick, the dad is sick. He's like, I don't know, Franny. Yeah. And that scene is like very unsettling. You don't see what's happening, you yeah. just hear it. Yeah. And because they live out in the country, they're kind of far removed from the big city, but you know it's coming. Yeah. You that's know right. that that wave is coming your way eventually. You just don't yeah. know when it's going to get to you. And it's out of their control. Completely, too, right? Yeah. And, like, that's one of the toughest things to, to grasp a hold of, yeah. is that you can't do anything about this. You can't do anything about society breaking down. Yeah. You can't do anything about this virus that's in the air. It's so helpless. Yeah. Yeah, the helplessness of it. Number eight on our list is the Zelda scene, <laughs> not the video game. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Pet Cemetery, the flashback to her yeah. sister suffering and dying in bed and it's the trauma that she suffers and like a little girl has to look after her sick sister in bed while her parents take off all the horror that comes up in her mind too never get out of bed again rachel and she's like chasing her and all this like yeah. oh it's fucking creepy and the way zelda looks too is like yeah oh number seven on our list and this is the lincoln tunnel scene in the stand this scene always got to me when this movie first came out on TV as a miniseries, man. Mm -hmm. Like, when he approaches that tunnel, 
just the darkness, right? Yeah, the that, blackness. Yeah. That's scary enough. But then when you go into the tunnel, and that's a long fucking tunnel <laughs> yeah. to be on foot, walking through basically a cemetery, mm -hmm. but nobody's in the ground in their cars. <laughs> yeah, dead. And the fact that he has to do it alone, yeah, too, is like just the ultimate. You don't know, like there could still be living people in the darkness. And of course, he drops the flashlight, yeah, and it stops working. It's yeah. like, oh, when he's like in the middle of the tunnel, yeah. it's like, oh man. And then he pulls the headlights of the car, and yeah. he sees all those dead people and everything. Yeah. Like, oh man. And just imagine the stench and all oh. that stuff too, like the stench of all the rotting corpses, and like it really does. Like it, that scene does a really good job of hammering all that realism home. Next one on our list, number six, is actually not from a horror movie, yeah. but it's a scary moment that always scared the shit out of me as a kid. It actually like, oh, like fucked me up a little <laughs> bit, like Jesus. And that's when the kids find the dead body in Stand By Me. And it's just the way that it's shot and the way the dead body looks, yeah. it's so dead. Mm -hmm. Like as a kid, I don't think I saw anything on the movie screen that looked as dead as that kid. Yeah. And it's not a dummy or anything. It's like it's a real, it's an actor. It just looks so lifeless. The empty vessel of that corpse scared the shit out of me. Right. It's always tough for um, for movies to get that right, yeah. too, you know? Like using a somebody who's alive to present the feeling of death. A dead person, yeah. I like how in that movie, too, where the kids, because they go on this journey to find this body, it's, they, just, it's supposed to be this big grand thing. I'm yeah, gonna find the body, we're gonna get the reward. and They think that it's gonna be some exciting moment. Yeah. And then they see the dead body and it kind of hits home that, oh, this human being is dead. Yeah. And it's not as fun or as funny yeah. no, as they I, fucking thought. No. And the music too, it's scary. It's fucking, I don't know, I think it's a terrifying moment for a kid. <laughs> Especially, yeah. When we were kids to see that part, you know? It's like, ah, the movie's all fun and games, and then they're having fun, mm -hmm. and suddenly they find a real dead person. Shit gets real, yeah. yeah. Number five on our list, and this is from Christine, one of our favorite horror movies. And this is Arnie's speech that he gives Dennis on New Year's. He graciously lets Dennis into, the, into Christine. Don't be shy, my car is your car. You don't like beer? I thought, I thought you, you liked like beer. beer. And when he proceeds to take him on that long drive. You can tell he's, he's gone off the deep end in his yeah. eyes, right? What he's talking about, too, he's like, When you believe right back in that someone, then watch out, world, because nobody can stop you, then nobody, ever. You feel that way about Lee? Like, fuck no! Talking about Christine, man! It's like, all that shit you're talking about, the fucking car? Yeah. You're nuts! And then when he starts playing chicken with somebody, takes his hand off the fucking steering wheel, and the car drives itself. The car drives itself and takes a, like, a 90 degree turn <laughs> yeah. by itself. And see his foot go down on the accelerator, yeah. and he just goes faster and faster without him even, like, driving. Yeah. Steering, it's just like, oh my god, like and they show the odometer counting backwards, backwards, too. It's yeah. Like, it's like, what the fuck's going on? It really comes down to Keith Gordon's great performance as Arnie mm -hmm. going from a little nerd to a complete fucking madman. <laughs> yeah. And in that speech, is just like as mad as you can get. That's award winning death to the shitters of the world in 1979. Number four in our list is a scene from The Shining again. Mm -hmm. And we're picking a lot of scenes from The Shining here which people probably won't expect. <laughs> They're not doing, here's Johnny! <laughs> yeah, that's not all that scary. No. Although I prefer David Letterman! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, David! I'm Grandpa! I always found this scene very scary because it just shows how, again, like in the previous one we mentioned, how mad this character is, how far he's gone off the deep end. Jack sits Danny on his lap and he starts talking to him. Never do anything to hurt you. Never. You know he doesn't mean it. Yeah, because he's kind of already gone off the rails at this point. And, right? and, and the music and the way Jack Nicholson plays it and the way Danny sells it. Him not even believing his dad's own words. Yeah. 
it's so fucking creepy and you kind of that's like foreshadowing like you know this is not gonna end well because this scene is so fucking weird and awkward number three on our list and this is from the mist and this is the crazy suicide pact scene that they have at the end when they're all in the car the character david he's gonna take his gun and he's gonna kill all of the people in the car and then kill himself because of all the weird and crazy shit that they've seen on this drive, right? All these those weird monsters and everything from those other planets and the, shit. The, the, the lead up to that's insane. Oh, Even when they're crazy. driving and you see yeah. all these weird things, like unworldly things walking around in the mist. Like and... what the fuck are we getting into? Yeah, it's like you kind of would maybe your mind would go there. Yeah. To. Yeah. Maybe ending this. And then they drive as far as they can and run out of gas and they're just sitting there. Yep. And they all look at each other. He starts loading the gun. <laughs> it's like creepy. Cuts to outside the car and you just see the boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And then ah! <laughs> he's all trying to shoot himself. Or... Yeah, 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 but he's got no more bullets yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh and then, man. And then he's all by himself. It's a pretty wild fucking scene. And then to top it off, <laughs> everything was fine. Yeah, <laughs> the army's all right behind him. <laughs> They're all cleaning everything up and like civilization will be fine. Oh, it's like, that's like the ultimate yeah. fuck you. Oh. Oh. Number two on our list is from the miniseries It. Yeah. And it's that final scene on night one, part one, where Stan goes upstairs to take a bath after he's heard that it is back. And his wife comes up the stairs to give him yeah. a beer. Yeah, yeah, she's got the beer. And the whole the whole way it's shot, the way it's played out, where you see her reaction before you see anything. Yeah. Trickle of blood on the floor and then it pans and it see written it. in blood it on the tiles no! and, and it's a lot of it to do with her performance yeah. the way she sells seeing stan in the tub dead like that is it, I, as a kid that scared the fucking shit out oh, of me more so than pennywise yes it delivers on how scary pennywise is without even seeing pennywise they didn't even have to show pennywise in that whole first part in that scene would have gotten the point across about how scary and fucked up the yeah. situation is that he might be going into, that he chooses not to go into. Yeah, he chooses to end his own life rather than dealing with Pennywise again. Yeah. It's like, that's insane. The brilliant cliffhanger. We had to wait another week. Yeah. When yeah. that first aired to see how that finished <laughs> off. You know? I remember it was wild. We didn't have the technology like we have now where, you know, you could get some something that's pirated and just yeah. watch the second yeah. part. <laughs> yeah. So you literally had to wait. Yes, yeah. kids, you had to wait. A whole week! <laughs> yep. And for it to end like that, though, and it was like, wow. That was all the rage. It was all the talk. The next day at yeah. school, everyone talked about that miniseries. Yeah. And that last scene. That scene is pretty graphic. Yep. You kind of weren't expecting them to go quite that far on TV. And that'll bring us to number one on our list of Stephen King's scariest moments. And uh, this one we had kind of a tough time deciding on. You took this way too seriously, man. Like, you wouldn't even let me leave the room until we decided on a moment. Ah, it was just a few days. Relax. Days? Months? You kept me in that room for months! I know you've been out. What? I know you've been out of your room. No, I haven't. Adam, my McFarlane Michael Myers toy always points due south. Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Is this what you're looking for, Adam? I know. I made you watch the Shining miniseries. I know what you must be thinking of me. But you know, Adam, it's okay. We just need more time. Eventually we'll decide on the scariest Stephen King moment. You know what they used to do to YouTubers in the early days of YouTube? Do you know what they did to the creators that didn't post weekly no. content? 
Well, don't worry. They didn't kill them. That'd be like throwing away a VHS just because it was a cut box. They had to make sure they kept uploading. The operation was called hobbling. Justin, what, whatever you're thinking about doing, please don't do it. Justin, God. Justin, for God's sake. God, I love YouTube. Eh, you're overreacting. You're walking again. Yeah, that took me months. Months! And number one on our list is the opening diner scene in Children of the Corn. We had to put it number one because it actually made us stop watching the movie when we first watched it as kids. Yeah. It scared us that much. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty brutal, too. It's Sunday afternoon after church yeah. or whatever. Everybody's the... having coffee yeah. and cake. And your kids walk in, you see all these fucking tools like this that yeah. they have and everything. Someone locks the door of the diner and they just slaughter everyone in the diner. And how? Fuck. And they put that guy's hand in that deli slicer like oh and you see the the blood squirt on the kid's face and like they slit the throats of the people like holy yeah. shit. They cut to Isaac just watching. Yeah. Like through the window with a slight glimpse of happiness. Yeah. <laughs> that really got to us, and that was enough for to say, nah, we're not watching this anymore. That's it, yeah. And the fucking music for that scene yeah. is intense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, does that ever help to drive it home? So it may not be like Stephen King's best movie adaptation, but goddamn, that scene was fucking scary. Yeah, yeah. And then we started watching it again, then we had to turn it off again when that kid gets hit by the car. Yeah, and that oh. was all scary too. Oh, oh man, oh man. There you have it, there's our Stephen King top 10 scariest moments list. Uh, but we do have some honorable mentions. Yeah, because again, it was hard to just think of 10, so these are the ones that we're kind of in our, maybe on the list, but we left them off, but we gotta talk about anyways. Yeah. The first one's actually from The Mist, and that is when they're in the grocery store, they're all trapped in there, and it's at night and they have the, the lights on inside the grocery store. All those weird fucking bugs oh, yeah. start coming onto the glass, landing on the glass, and they're kind of looking. Like, what is that? This big fucking weird thing that doesn't exist in your brain like what the fuck is this thing yeah and more keep coming and more and they just cover the whole front window and it's like what is out there yeah it's it's the mystery again just like dick halloran driving through the darkness what's out there that's a scary yeah. part what what else is out there and then they start breaking the glass i was just gonna say yeah and it's like <laughs> Fuck, they're coming in here. The only thing that's separating them from the unknown is this pane yeah, of glass. That's right? what's scary about it. This is what's separating between them and oblivion. Mrs. Kirsch in It, when Beverly, when she's all grown up and she goes back to her childhood home. In the miniseries. Yes, that's right, that's right. And she starts slurping that tea. <laughs> Man. Drink your tea, dear, and her teeth are all <laughs> rotten and everything. What's wrong? And then she drops the tea, and she goes to clean it up, and she looks up, and it's her dad, and he's all, like, melted. I miss you, baby. <laughs> I miss you a lot. <laughs> Chases her, and yeah. grabs her shoulder, and she ends up getting out of the house. That part is freaky as hell. The, the funny thing is, uh, Beverly's dad in that miniseries is scary enough when he's alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he's a real person. Yeah. Let alone he's dead. Mm -hmm. Our last honorable mention is from the Shining miniseries of all things. And that is Cortland Mead's performance as Danny Torrance. <laughs> it's one of the scariest fucking things I've ever seen in my life. Come on over. It's good packing snow. <laughs> fucking kid. You're ruining this house. Did we get some heat when we talked major shit about that kid in our full review of the Shining <laughs> miniseries? 
but we don't care. We still think he fucking sucks, <laughs> yeah. and that performance is so terrifyingly bad, it had to make the list. That's right. Scared the hell out of me. So there you have it. There's our top ten list of Stephen King's scariest moments and some honorable mentions. If you have any suggestions, put them in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. Because there's so many. There's like, tons. Let's, like, let's face it, like, to narrow it down to ten is pretty hard. Yeah. And Stephen King, man, like, come on, out of all the horror authors, or even authors in general, yeah. he's got to have the most amount of movie adaptations ever. Yeah. Like, it, and it's got to be by a landslide. I've never counted and done the math. But, like, come on. Even if you're not a horror fan, there's one of these movies that you know about, right? Yeah. That you've and, seen. Yeah. That's embedded in your brain. Exactly. And there's probably one of these scenes that you know about, too. Even if you haven't watched the movie, I'm sure you've heard about it, probably, right? Yeah. Everyone knows who Pennywise is. Exactly, yep. And until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>